<laughs> so guys, uh, some familiar faces here, T Street, Core Lords. But um, anyways, so this is uh, Crosby, I'm Griffin, if you guys don't know us. And uh, we're just here to kind of tell you a little bit about our story and where we're at right now. For me personally, uh, this last year, this year, 2022, has been the best year of my life as a competitive surfer. I won two CT events on the world tour, and that's a dream that I had when I was your guys' age that I never really thought was possible. And then this year I made it happen, and it's just through all these things I've learned, and I want to share that with you guys. And so Crosby also has a story of his own. He's three years younger than me, and he's learning all the lessons right now. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm on the QS, the Challenger Series, and I'm I'm just trying to qualify to get where Griffin is, and I'm kind of like on a little bit of a separate path right now, like it's just a different where he's on tour winning comps, and I'm trying to get there and just trying to figure out kind of what my surfing ability, or like contest surfing is kind of like how to figure it out, and um, a lot of a lot of things come to your head when you're when you're doing contests and like just trying to figure yourself out. So we're just kind of here to just talk to you guys about it and just get you guys psyched. You! Okay, so Crosby, Crosby, a little bit about Crosby's story is when he was probably eight, nine, 10, 11, I was always three years older and I felt at, at that time I was uh, doing pretty well and for myself as a surfer. I wasn't a pro surfer yet, but I was an amateur surfer and trying to become a pro surfer. And Crosby was also doing the same thing, but he didn't really seem as focused as a lot of the other kids his age. And what you we would we would call Crosby the late bloomer because it took him a couple years to actually figure out what it takes to become a pro surfer. And, yeah. And well, do good. Well, Griffin was sort of like the prodigy kid, kind of grew up, like, he was the guy when he was like 13, he was in surf mags and stuff, and I was kind of like, I was a little bit slower when I was younger, I was a little bit chubbier, and like, I kind of struggled to like, make it in contests, and I remember this one time I was, there was the US Champs down at Lowers, and, and uh, I remember I just fell on like every wave I took off on, I think I was about like 13 years old, 12 years old, and I remember after, like, vividly, Griffin, I was on the beach and I was just, like, so just rattled, didn't know what to think, and Griffin came up to me and was like, was like, look, if you want to, if you want to be a good surfer, like, you got to surf every single day, you have to put in your time, and, and then he compared me to this other kid who was surfing every day, and he was always in the water spending a lot more time than me and most of the other kids, and he got so much better, so much quicker than I did, and then Griffin just basically told me, just, put in the time and then and then that summer I remember I was like okay I gotta surf four hours every single day and and uh, and every day I just put in four hours every day and then I ended up getting a lot better a lot quicker and started like figure out how to surf a little bit better yeah well <laughs> he was uh, he was 14 when I told him that and or, yeah, I'm pretty sure 13 or 14 he, like 13. he was always kind of like hanging out in the street and <laughs> it was just like doing random stuff, just didn't have like a clear focus of where he wanted to go. Like I, I wanted it, but I never really was like super determined. And yeah. I hated losing, so. Yeah, he hated losing so much, so it would really annoy me that he would get so mad when he lost, but he was never actually putting in the work to get there. So I, I just thought I gotta tell him like straight up, even if it's gonna hurt him a little bit, he's gotta he's gotta know. So I told him like, you have to be surfing a minimum of four hours a day every day for the next for all summer. And I think summer was just starting, and then he did that all summer for like two summers in a row, and then that U.S. Champs contest down at uh, Lowers. If any of you guys are in it or know about it. It's like the biggest amateur event uh, in America. And Crosby went and he won it four years in a row, which was still the record to this day. So you, after you that, he went on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> and it was cool. So yeah, that's, 
that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got, Cross? Oh yeah, another another little tip is as a surfer to improve, you have to be self-critical. And if any of you guys get filmed at all, or I mean, this could go into any sport, you know. You have to be self-critical on yourself and and really know what you got to get better at. And it's kind of hard because. For me, at least, I was really hard on myself, and I would watch a, a clip, and I had expectations in my head of where I wanted to be, and I would watch that clip, and if I didn't, if I wasn't living up to those expectations, I'd be super hard on myself, and it would suck. I like, I literally was crying, like just watching myself, like, like just devastated. I I wasn't looking the way I wanted to look, and um, it would really suck. But that would, the next time I went in the water, I would. I wouldn't just like forget about that and feel bad for myself. I really try and figure out what it was that I needed to do to get better. And when I was in the water, I'd be working on that every way and thinking about it constantly, and not just like out there talking to my friends and whatever. You know, I was just like really focused. I mean, obviously talking to your friends, but not losing sight of <laughs> what it, what it is you're trying to get better at. And um, I don't know how do how'd you go with that. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of always, I was kind of always like the one who was always talking in the water, and I would be laying off my board, just kind of lazy, not really like trying to surf. And Griffin would always come up to me and like tell me like, you gotta focus, like you gotta do it, you gotta go, you gotta be all in on this. And uh, basically, just that. And I, I feel like what helped us a lot too was um, watching a lot of surf videos and comparing ourselves to the surfer in the video and having like a favorite surfer because I remember the first time like I remember the first time Griffin got me watching surf videos and I remember the first time watching a surf video and like going out to go surf it just had so much like so much amp and excitement to go surf and try to like replicate my surfing to that surfer and try to surf just like that surfer and like I feel like that helps out a lot just to watch a pro and then go out and try to surf just like that pro I feel like that Right there is like can take you to another step. Yeah, super good. Yeah, sometimes it's really hard to get motivated, especially when you're young. But I don't know, you you just gotta if you can find like someone that you really look up to or is an idol of yours and and see what it is that they do and take that and make it a little part of your program and like for me, I would. When I read, I would. They didn't, there wasn't Instagram when I was your guys' age, so we were reading magazines. And I read in one magazine, someone said that Dane Reynolds surfed more than anyone that they've ever seen in their whole life. He would just spend like hours and hours in the water. And I was, and I when I read that, I went, "Wow, like that's what I have to do. I have to just spend hours and hours in the water." And when my friends would go in, I'd be like, "I'm staying out another hour, or two hours." And um, I felt like that mindset really helped me jump leaps and bounds above those kids at an early age. So mm -hmm. um, I think those little things make the difference. Yeah. You guys all do contests, right? For bams and stuff? Yeah. I'm sure everyone loses a lot, because I lose a lot. <laughs> and I think, um, I think learning how to lose is a really big one. Um, just because you're gonna lose more than you win in surfing because it's an individual sport and there's so many good surfers. And right now I'm on the QS and I'm, that's what I'm really learning how to do is just lose and, and learn from the losses and try to just put it into the next contest. But I think learning how to lose is a huge one because it's so easy to like get so discouraged on yourself and, and after you lose you just could think you suck or whatever. But it's, it's, it's a, losing's the best way to figure yourself out and the best way to figure out your surfing. And, and put it into the next seat, and I'm still losing a lot, but I'm I, would, I don't mind it. I'm kind of loving it because I'm putting it into myself and learning from it. And I know that it's all the way you look at it. And if you look at losing as a good thing, then you can just better yourself as a surfer and as a person. Mm -hmm. And you probably have a good outlook on it too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <coughs> there's moments where like you just constantly will be losing, and like 
that can be anything in life where things just don't seem to be going your way but like if you never give up eventually you're gonna like break through that wall I always thought of it as as like there's a wall and you got a hammer and you're just like hammering at the wall and you're not getting through and then one day you're gonna hit it and it's gonna go right through and it'll be the best feeling in the world and so <laughs> that's uh I don't know it's all uh, perspective I guess you know and like if you just trust in that and trust the unknown of, of life because that's really what makes life so fun is is not knowing what's coming next so it's uh I guess being grateful for those things and um, yeah Sick. what else we got guys about uh, journal writing in the journal oh yeah um, after losing and stuff oh yeah so what we like to do, we started when we were like, maybe like 16, 15 or 16. Probably, you guys are way younger, so if you start now, it'd be really beneficial. But um, after we lost, like, it just got to a point where we'd lose a lot and it, we didn't want it to happen anymore. So in order to remember our mistakes that we lost in the heat, we would write our mistakes down. And so that way we wouldn't make the same mistake again. And by writing it down, and you're just like imprinting it into your memory, and it really, really helps a lot. And so, we recommend that you guys do that. And also, writing down your goals, like the start of the year, write down a couple of goals that you have, and then so that way you're always going to have that in the back of your head, like driving and going for that. And then even like writing down not just your goals, but what you have to do to achieve your goals. So. For me, I would write, I'm gonna train four times this week. I'm gonna serve four hours minimum, five days this week. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna meditate this many times. Like, write down what it is that you're gonna do to get the goal. Not just like, oh, I'm gonna have this goal and hopefully I get it. Like, you have to have a plan to get there. And you have that going too? Yeah, and, and you can use the journal for a lot of stuff too, I mean, I used my journal just the other day. I was having a, I wasn't having the best day. I wasn't surfing good or whatever. I, was, I woke up wrong side of the bed, and and I just wasn't in that good of a mood. And I just wrote it down, wrote down what I was thinking, what was bugging me, and like just like that, it kind of just I put it on the paper and I closed the book and I just kind of forgot about it. So that's what I like to use it for. And also when I lose heats and then I write down what I lost and then I I pretty much just shut it and. I forget about it and then I'll go look back to it and go look back at the heat and see what I did wrong and I have it all all right there in the book so it's like I'll never forget it. Mm -hmm. That's good. I got one story to share on my journal. This is from this is from this year in El Salvador. I was there and I, I actually ended up winning this contest but before, for some reason, I just was feeling really bad and really mentally just off and like, I don't know, things were like making me really aggravated and it was really weird, but because I had my journal and I wrote, wrote it down, it like felt like I just completely pushed the reset button. It was like f fresh as can be. So here was, here's a little bit of what I had in my journal. For some reason, I've been feeling a little sense of unease being that everything in my life seems to be going really good and in an upward trajectory. I almost feel scared that something bad could happen soon or scared it will end. I need to stay present in my body, enjoy the little things. I'm here to have fun with people I love, not to be the guy in the contest. I have realized that there has been an underlying nervousness or anxiousness about the race for the final five. I feel much better about it now that I see it. I must have faith in the ocean. Everything is a reflection of myself. And then I also wrote this. I've noticed myself getting easily annoyed by other people. I've noticed myself being very concerned about the future and if we are going to get good waves in the contest. I've noticed being worried about what board I will choose to ride in my heats. And then I like to write like what I need to do to get out of that. And then so I wrote, I would like to fix this by focusing only on today, one day at a time. Be present and content with what I have now. Put myself in other people's shoes. Understand that no matter what board I ride, as long as I am fully committed and decisive, it will work great. Pay attention to my thoughts. 
So I wrote that at the beginning of the contest, and then a week later I ended up winning it. And if I didn't write this on this paper, I don't think I would have won the contest. So that's one little thing for me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. Do you have any, any of that? Or? Mm, your stories are better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think you said it in there, you're like having fun at the contest. I think having fun, but also working hard, is the perfect mixture. Mm -hmm. I, I know you've been working on it a lot, uh, on the, the CTs, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, at the beginning, I've always battled with like being like too serious or like or not serious enough, but there's definitely like a happy medium where you, you have to stay like, you want to be staying self-disciplined with yourself and doing all the things that you know you need to be doing, like the training, or even Crosby and I have created, it took us a while to create this, but we've created like a morning ritual that makes us throughout the day feel just like we can come back to that anytime something's throwing us off or we're feeling bad. Basically, my morning ritual is I wake up I try and wake up early, like lately I've been going 6 a.m. I wake up, I read a book for 30 minutes, and then I meditate for 30 minutes, and then that's where my journal comes in. I, I write down three things I'm grateful for, and then I write down three things I'm grateful for that haven't happened in my life, and that's my way of trying to manifest. And in that, I write, like, I'll write down, I'm grateful for winning a world title. I'm grateful for winning 20 CT events. I'm grateful for being the best surfer ever. <laughs> Those things <laughs> haven't really happened, but I'm just, by writing that down and putting it out there into the quantum field of possibilities, and just, yeah, hopefully that will come into play one day, and I don't know, it's just fun. It's just something to try out and see if it works. Yeah. And everyone's getting a journal, right? Here? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, so you guys will have your journals. You guys can practice them. I think on the inside, what, what's it say on the inside? In here? Right. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, right here, you can write your goals for the day, which is really good. You can, so that way you have everything you need to do, like training, you could do whatever, reading, school, surfing whatever and then right here is cool too I am um, some things that we've learned is Crosby and I have had mental coaches I had a mental coach since I was 19 he had used the same guy from Australia but he taught us like these little mantras and figured out like what words work the best for us that make us feel ourselves the most and so like right here you can write I am what I write is I am confident I am powerful I am fearless and so on, whatever makes you feel good. And then here, goals for the future. Write down whatever it is that it may be. It could be a year from now, five years from now, six months from now, whatever. And then this is the grateful section where you can write the grateful and try and manifest something crazy. And then here's the zone where you can kind of just free ball it. And if you're feeling really bad and you don't know what's going on inside of you, just pull this puppy out and just get all those thoughts on here and who knows it could help you a lot so that's kind of and then here you can you can do a drawing of whatever it could be a, a wave of whatever you want it to be yeah. <laughs> so i don't know um yeah just have fun with it i mean it's pretty epic we all get to jump in the water every day so it's a pretty amazing life we get to live here in san Clemente too so Nothing's really too wrong, and yeah, just enjoy it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and wait, one more thing. <laughs> All the, um, so from the journals, I think most of the, what is it, the prophets? The prophets yeah, yeah. are going to, to write Love on Our Arms, this foundation that started in San Diego. They're all about mental health and if you're struggling with mental health or thinking about like suicide, which I don't know if any of you guys are, you guys are young, probably not, but <laughs> um, if you're struggling at all with mental health, you can, you can call these guys and they'll help you right away and they'll find a, 
like a therapist that you can talk to, local therapist, yeah. and don't be afraid of therapists because that's very, very helpful. Crosby and I both had therapists, and just to be able to talk to someone about things that like are really hard to talk about is really healthy for you. So um, if you ever, you guys ever think about something like that to write love on your arms, you can go to them and and uh, it'll be free, right? Because they're donating. So, <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Perfect. All right.